Welcome back. Yes, we have quite an interesting guest on the show today, people. And he is Ked Wire. Yes. He's a Nigerian UK raised actor, TV host, social media sensation, entrepreneur, and reality star of the new UK hit series High Life. Yes, so it's uh, debuted on uh, Channel 4. And uh, of course, the Big Brother series, you know, everyone has heard your name in there as well for many different <laughs> reasons. Kid is striving to produce insightful, inspiring, entertaining content mm. and at the same time sort of tackle some of the stereotypes that represent today's multicultural community more accurately. Um, representing Nigeria yeah, all over the world. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Welcome to the show, Katie. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. All right. So first off, we, I just saw David and I'm like, oh, how was that experience? Because I know you guys were together last week, touring and having fun. Yeah. Talk to us about that experience quickly. When we went to Ghana? Yeah. But Ghana, that was actually my first time. In Ghana? In Ghana, which wow. is crazy because like, I've got a lot of fans in Ghana and I should have went yeah. the first time when I did the BBN show. Yeah. But going there was absolutely amazing. As soon as I got there, People came up to me, kid, we loved you on the show. They're very friendly, beautiful people. And um, we were only there for one night, oh, literally okay. one night. Okay. Got in there early, flew back the next day. Well, yes, met up with my good friend David, um, went out, had fun, you know, met some of our friends out there and sort of just like a breath Please, of fresh air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, you can understand how it's sort of hard for us to think, oh, this is your first time going to Ghana because, uh, you know, you, you've, you come from quite an elaborate background and, yeah. and you've, you know, express quite an elaborate lifestyle, which would sort of say, oh, you've had multiple experiences. The average young person your age hasn't experienced before. Mm -hmm. You know, um, let's talk about what it was like growing up with a father like yours, a Terry Wire, um, socialite, businessman. Talk to us about how it was growing up. I mean, up. look, my dad made everything easy. I mean, growing up um, in the surroundings we grew up in, we didn't really know the alternative mm. because you're always protected from um, the things your parents want to protect you for so yeah he made everything easy you know the private schools the holidays and 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 all those amazing things that come with um someone like my father um but i see it as you know he, he he's carrying a torchlight he's going to hand over the torchlight for, 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 for me and i'm going to take that torchlight and go further with it which is what i'm starting to do you know but you know he made things easy he made us comfortable but he instilled very good morals him and my mother instilled very good morals in me to be able to make the family proud and do good in the world as opposed to just using all of that and doing the opposite you know mm -hmm. sleeping around having fun and, and and not giving anything good back into the society. society so yeah. yeah i mean yeah i mean you, you i mean you just said it you had a very easy background and there were a lot of speculations and a lot of questions as to if he is coming from a well-to-do background, what is he doing in the Big Brother house? Mm. This is a reality TV show where there are a lot of people who are looking for the fame, looking for, you know, some way to just, you know, get out there, promote their brands. And here you are, <clears throat> someone from a, a socialite background. What are you doing in the house? So what, what, what compelled you to go into the Big Brother house the first time and even for the second time? I mean, first of all, we need to change the narrative that uh, the show is for a certain type of people. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that's basically saying people like me can't, can't go into the nice. show. Okay. And that's exactly preaching against what people don't want to be doing, you know. So it's supposed to be for everyone that's inclusive. Um, but of course, this is the biggest platform, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's got the biggest numbers. Okay. Africa has about a billion people. Yeah. Imagine all that number all that numbers you can go there and promote yourself go there and promote your business so me going there i knew exactly what i wanted to do i wanted the fame i wanted the exposure okay because i had a lot of plans for myself and for the people around me so i knew to do that the best step to get there was this platform so that was mission accomplished for the first time over okay the second time over i wanted to promote my businesses okay and that's exactly what i went to go and do my foundation and my my personal company mm -hmm. so i think with these things you need to know exactly what you want to go and achieve before you go there. Because some people go there with no plan and they think that, you know what, I'll go there, become famous, I'll sit back and the money will start coming in. Mm. That's a, a big lie and that's how a lot of them fail. Yeah. If you think about the ones from the very first Big Brother or even from five, six years ago, yeah. how many of them do you still know today? Mm. It's actually very difficult to maintain that level that's of exposure. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to go there with a plan. Don't go there with the idea of thinking you're going to get famous, get all these followers, yeah. and then the money will start rolling in. Yeah. That's not how it works. So I went there with a plan. Okay. 
we, we should touch on these businesses and these activities you're doing. Uh, you want there to promote your business and your foundation. Which one do you want to talk about first? We can talk about business. Okay. Yeah. Talk to us about that. So KW and Co. Um, started. In, if actually, let me go back a bit. <laughs> okay. So, so I, I actually started this probably in 2010, unofficially. So you know, growing up around my dad, I had a lot of these powerful men come into the house. You know, whether it's the vice presidents, heads of banks, mm -hmm. senate presidents, all these kind of people throughout all industries, mm -hmm. and I was very good at relating to them and talking to them mm -hmm. and staying in contact yeah. and getting their contact details, mm -hmm. okay. you know, and I never knew what I would use it for. I just kind of liked to relate to these people. Mm -hmm. And when I became like 18, 19, 20, around that age, I decided that, okay, I've got all these contacts and all these people. Let me try and do something with it. So okay. I set up my company then, which is called uh, Kid and Fraser. Okay. Actually, Fraser was my other business partner. Mm -hmm. And it was basically about you know, connecting people yeah. and, you know, making those kind of deals. Like I made, I made, I made PR, so much loss. PR, I made so much loss then. Okay. The first couple of years, I didn't make any money at all. I was overly confident, very inexperienced. Okay. I basically just stopped for about eight years until I went on a BBN. Mm. After BBN, the first time uh, I went, mm -hmm. opened me to a lot of other things like brands, exposure, more celebrities, more friends. Mm -hmm. Then I knew exactly what to do with these contacts of the people in the high society of... Yeah of Nigeria, and these celebrities who have, um, who have exposure, yeah. I connected the two together. Okay, fantastic. Yes, so then when I, um, when I went about a year after the first BBN, I went to the UK, yeah. there was a massive emergence of Afrobeats, mm. which was taken over the world. Mm. They now wanted to work with Nigerians, but they didn't have the uh, person in the middle who can, yeah. who can actually do the right job. Yeah. And that's where Kid W and Co comes in. We're basically the gap between the rest of the world and, and Nigeria, you know, so... Representing Nigeria all the way. No, of course. I, I, I like to see myself as one of Nigeria's greatest exports. Oh, great. You know, so, okay. Yeah. So talking about um, being one of Nigeria's greatest exports, you currently have um, a reality TV show, which is um, High Life. Talk to us about High Life a little bit and what inspired, you know, the reality show. So High Life is not actually new. It's, it was released in tw 2021 okay. um, on Channel 4 with... My amazing friend. It's got a great cast. You know, Cuppy's there, Camille is there, Tony Tone is there, Tommy is there, Irene is there, um, and, and, and Chifa. And basically, it's about unapologetic, um, hardworking, driven British Nigerians excelling in their industries. So that was the first show I did in UK, which then led me to do multiple other shows. But this was on the back end of Big Brother. You know, um, UK is obviously where I've grown up. Nigeria is where I'm from. So I'm trying to, like attack both okay. industries and that was the first thing I did to sort of get me out into that market mm. so it's done quite well for me okay oh. great now that we have discussed your business and your foundation let's go back to the gossip, <laughs> <laughs> gossip. let me uh, take some yes, water to, so to <laughs> wet in my mouth yes okay because we're about to get to the nitty-gritty of yeah. this conversation all right yeah. thank you very much so <laughs> prior to your um eviction from the big brother house yes yes right? yes yes there were a few comments, or so distasteful comments, from one of your, uh, one of the Big Brother contestants in the house, with Shia Wolowo. Mm. I would like to hear your thoughts on it. Mm. Secondly, there was also reports about your mom saying that she was going to sue Shia Wolowo yes. for um, certain comments that he made about you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that, Kid okay. Wire. <laughs> in that order? Yes. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So the comments uh, Shia made, for me, I'm totally against it. Of course I am. Um, you know, I, I could end up having a daughter and I've got many friends that have daughters. So I, I believe every man is, is against that. Um, but it won't be too fair if I talk too much about it because he's got to come out here and defend himself and he can't do that because he's still in the house. Mm. But of course I stand against that uh, as well as any other decent human being. And I would like to believe he didn't mean what he said because of course, as you all know, um, fraud is just become a, a father a to father, a beautiful exactly. baby Bro, girl. And I'm sure yeah. if he sees these comments, he's not going to be, be very happy. happy. So it. we would like to believe those, those weren't uh, Shay's intentions. And when he comes out, I'm pretty sure he's going to have a lot of explaining to, to do. do, you know. Yeah. So I want to believe he didn't mean to, um, right. mean to say those things. Yeah, and um, then, yeah I'm against it. Okay. And then with Shay, first of all, I didn't see it as a, as a threat. Um, I had a lot of drinks that day. And I think he was speaking a lot of like slang that I didn't even understand. Mm -hmm. So that's why my reaction was more... You were cool about I was, it. I was cool about it. Yeah. You know, my, my only um, thing going through my head was, ah, Ike is upset, Ike is my guy. 
Okay. Let me go and speak to EK. So I didn't see her as a threat. And, um, you know, a mother is doing what any mother Mother's would do, like yeah. trying to protect her son. Her, 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 her son. I haven't spoken to her about it, okay. you know, um, but she knows she's not going to take it further than that. You know, what happens in the house should stay in the house. Mm. And that's the thing, when you're under so much immense pressure, it's just the nature of the, of the game, mm. you know. So I, I don't take anything personally. Mm. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, even speak to Shea about that when he comes out of the house, because to me, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a the thing. Deal. It wasn't a big deal. Okay. okay. What do you think about Shea? What I think, um, that was the first time I think I've met him. Um, he's actually a funny guy. Um, we got along quite well in the house. Um, he was quiet, minded his own business. Uh, I definitely know he's a loving father uh, and, a, and a good family man. Um, we didn't spend so much time together, yeah, but from the times we did spend okay. together, we were just making a lot of jokes. All right. um, so yeah. I, I have no bad sort of feelings, feelings yeah. towards him or anyone in the house. I'm a very loving person. Yeah, you know? okay. yeah. we actually feel that, we feel that energy. Uh, we, I actually felt that energy even just watching you on screen. Um, and we honest, honestly, we wish you really well with yes. all your projects and yeah. endeavors Thank you so much. Yeah. moving on. And of course, as soon as you start some of them, come back, talk to us about it. Yes, and we'll I'd be love part to. Of that. Especially love about to. the foundation, because yeah. you yes, have I'd love quite to. You know, yeah. interesting projects there. Thank you. But uh, now that we've taken so much from you, yeah. it is time to whet your appetite. Yes. Right? <laughs> so we have food, food in the kitchen. Yes, mm -hmm. Chef Ken has been hard at work making something interesting.